Why does he not go to Afghanistan or Syria to fight for ISIS or Taliban? He has this kind of George Bush or Donald Trump understanding of Islam. Hakikachu is only a literalist and honest as long as he is sitting in his nice suburban home in America. Why don't you do that, Harris? Is it because you're a con man? Is it because you're dishonest? Anyway, I always used to wonder how could people believe in war and a certain idea and are always propagating it, but when it comes to doing it themselves, they don't do it whether that's George W. Bush or Trump or our very own Hakikachu. These guys are okay to propagate wars and revolutions, but when it comes to taking, taking action, they run away. Trump made health excuses and so did George W. Bush, but our friend Hakikachu also makes similar excuses to get out of it. Why does he not go to Afghanistan or Syria to fight for ISIS or Taliban? If you say, well, they're not truly Islamic, then go there. It's definitely much closer to Muhammad or your true Islam than America is. But no, I'm keen to see what excuses you make this time. Hakikachu likes to present himself as not like any other apologist. He says he says it as it is. He doesn't hold back. If Islam condones violence, he says, yes, yeah, so what it so what? It is what it is. But when it comes to fighting the holy war or application of Sharia, he doesn't actually do anything. At least those jihadis who went to Syria to fight for ISIS were honest. Osama bin Laden, who gave up his life of luxury, was honest. They were literalist and honest. Hakikachu is only a literalist and honest as long as he is sitting in his nice suburban home in America watching Muslim apologists debate on 70-inch TVs. And so is the case with all these trolls who is following Hakikachu enjoys. They stay at home, probably enjoy welfare payments, but buy nice cars and enjoy shisha at night. Voila, life is good. Everything's sorted, but let's curse the West. Look what Prophet Muhammad said about people like Hakikachu. Not equal among the believers who sit and the Mujahideen who fight for Allah, Tirmidhi 3033. Look what the Quran says. Fighting is enjoyed upon you, enjoined upon, upon you. While it is hard on you, it could be that you dislike something when it is good for you. Quran, chapter 2, verse 216. This is directly for you, Hakikachu. I remember Apostate Prophet asked uh, you the same question. Hakikachu, you simply said, well, I have my family here. How bloody convenient. So are you saying that those people who used to go to jihad would take their families with them? This is what Prophet Muhammad said about the family. The Prophet said, none of you will have faith till he loves me more than his father, his children, and all mankind, Bukhari 15. So, Hakikachu, you, 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 you want to get into answering questions, answer this question. Do you love your parents and your family more than you love your love the prophet? So, you got to pick up your love for, you, you, you got to give up your love for nice, comfy beds, big TVs, halal cheeseburgers, or kebabs maybe, and get off your backside and go set an example. Fight! for what you believe in. You had the perfect opportunity to go to Syria or Afghanistan to fight for your cause, but you chose to sit in your nice house in America, whose economy runs on interest, and according to you guys, spilling the blood of innocent Muslims in Afghanistan and Iraq, being allies of Israel, like Jews. You are basically living and enjoying the perks of a country that is literally the enemy of Muslims like Afghanistan. It cannot be clearer than this. It's like Muslims are fighting the kuffars of Quraysh, and here you are saying, nah, I'm just going to sit in my house in Mecca. You are willing to run the risk of raising your children in this evil society that is more than likely going to corrupt your children. They might fall into the trap of the Western lifestyle, like going out, partying, drinking, having premarital sex, all the horrible things that you worry about. I actually know some of some modest Muslim families who leave Western countries. Just when their children are about to hit the ages of 10 or 11, they go back, citing their fears just mentioned. Like they used to show in the cartoons, um, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, don't you see a jackass? You know, like, that, that's how I feel. You, you must feel like that at some point. We have got another five-minute response coming in from Daniel. Thanks so much. The floor is all yours. Okay, Harris is completely misrepresenting Islamic law. In Islamic law and the Sharia, there is no obligation at all times to fight jihad, and there's no obligation at all times to take slaves or sex slaves. This is a complete misrepresentation. Harris needs to study Islamic law and fiqh because he's clearly ignorant. He has this kind of... Uh, 
you know, George Bush in understanding of Islam or Donald Trump understanding of Islam, where it's just about killing and murdering. This is like from in intelligence agencies, basically. You think ISIS is Islam. Nowhere have I endorsed ISIS or said that, yeah, they're the true uh, representation of Islam. You are simply misrepresenting. And so it's a complete straw man. All you're doing is straw man arguments, and you can't even respond to any of the points that I made. I responded to your point about slavery, and now I'm going to respond to the point of sex slavery. But I just want to make one other point. Why don't you, Harris, you want me to get off my backside and go to Afghanistan while that country is being bombed and being threatened by the United States and uh, just getting out of a 20-year brutal occupation with, mil with thousands of deaths and rapes? Why don't you tell your followers, Harris, all these followers that you have in Pakistan and India, all these uh, Mortads like you, tell them to move to Botswana. Why don't you tell them to move to Botswana, tell them to move to Haiti, because Botswana and Haiti, they have LGBT rights, they have women's rights. Why are they in Muslim countries? You should tell them to move to Botswana and Haiti. And in fact, it would be a more favorable position than Muslims moving to Afghanistan, because if they, if your followers move to Botswana, Pakistan wouldn't bomb Botswana. Pakistan wouldn't try to uh, agitate in Botswana and try to get them to adopt Sharia or Islamic law. They would be able to live their free lives with human rights and LGBT rights and women's rights. Why don't you do that? Harris? Is it because you're a con man? Is it because you're dishonest? You're not telling your followers in none of your videos, hey guys, human rights are great. Move from a Muslim country like Pakistan or Bangladesh and go to Botswana and Haiti. You never say that. So you're a hypocrite. You are a con man. Kick it over for a five minute response from Harris Sultan. In case you didn't see it in the live chat, there is a poll, folks. Feel free to take that poll and go ahead, Harris. It's funny that you say no obligation to join jihad. How convenient for you, yeah? But where, where is the longing to, to work for your God, work for your religion, to spread the word of Allah? Where, where is the longing for that? No. Yeah, that, that nice comfy couch is much better than why why go for jihad in Afghanistan. You didn't praise ISIS, I know that, but you did praise Taliban. Uh, why don't I move to Botswana or Haiti? Well, because um, the, the, we human rights is not the only thing. It's just a part of the package. It's not the whole package. So there are so much other, so many other things that you want to get. Plus one and Haiti probably don't take refugees either. Um, and why would you not want to go to a country where you can where, where you can maximize pleasure and you live your life to its maximum? Um, so I think that that was easy to respond and take that long. Anyway, now let's talk about the rights Sharia gives to women. I'm sure you have a script written for that too.